Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins and welcome to part 5 of my Laravel tutorial. In this video we're going to begin working with a model, so we'll learn how to use Laravel's ORM called Eloquent to interact with our database. In this video we're just going to focus on retrieving data from our database. So this is our author's homepage, and what we want to do is just display all of our authors here that are in our database and then we should be able to click on that author and that should take us to a new page to display information specifically about that individual author. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, the first thing I want to do is if we take a look in our database you'll see that we only have two authors to work with. So I want to insert a few more authors so that we have uh, just more data to display for this video. So I think the easiest way to do that is to use Artisan and reset my database. And then we have this Add Authors migration, which we use to insert the two authors. And I'm just going to paste in some additional authors here and then re-migrate the database so that we'll have some more authors to use for this video. So I'm just going to go into my command line and change directories into the Laravel folder that I have here. And then I'll run PHP Artisan migrate colon reset and that'll reset the database and now I have some additional authors that I'm just going to paste in here there we go so I've inserted six authors uh, each one has a different name a longer biography and an individual created at and updated at date lastly we just need to uh, change the down method so that it'll delete these six authors so I'll paste that in here There we go. And let me fix the formatting here. I'll indent it and get rid of these extra lines here. All right, so that's our new migration. It'll insert some additional authors for us to use. So I'll save this and close it out. And I'm going to switch back to my command line. And I'll just run PHP artisan migrate to remigrate the database. And if we go to our browser and look at our authors table here, we can see that we have six authors to work with now. Now in the last video I showed you a couple of different ways of creating your layouts. So if we go into our controllers and open up authors controller we can see that the last way that I showed you was using this layout property. Now I'm going to switch back to using blades sections for creating my layouts. You can continue using this method if you like, but I just prefer using sections. So I'm going to change this a little bit and clean up the action. Uh, since we're going to be working with the database in this video, we're not going to need to use any of this uh, information that we sent here. We were just using this data to experiment on passing data around. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of this so we don't need any of that data uh, we don't even need to store the view into a variable I just like to return the view rather than put it into a variable so that's gonna just return our index view um, need to make sure we keep the quote there and then we do need to set a title for the page so I'm gonna use the with method to bind a title variable to the view and I'll give the page a title of authors and books there we go and we don't need this layout property at the top anymore since we aren't using that. So there's our controller and action updated. I think that's a lot cleaner looking. So now let's go into our view file and change that. So we'll go into index.blade.php and we just need to tell it to use our layout. So we'll say at layout and tell it to use the default layout file. And then we just need to create our content section again. We'll wrap our code of our view in a section then end the section down here and then I'll just indent this and we aren't going to be using any of these variables anymore remember we deleted them out of the action so we'll get rid of that we'll just have an h1 tag in here for the moment so that fixes up the view file we just need to change our layout so we'll open up default.blade.php and instead of echoing out this content variable we will just yield the content section there we go. So let's go to the browser and make sure we didn't break anything. And we'll take a look at our author's index page. And there we go, we just get the heading. And you can see it's using the layout, but it's no longer displaying that uh, experimental information that we were working with. So let's get started and we'll create our model now. Let's go back into our text editor. And under the models folder, let's create a new file. 
and I'm going to save it as author.php. Now Laravel assumes that the table in your database is named in the plural form and that your model file is named in the singular form of that table name. And that's what we've done here. We have an authors table and now an author model. So our model is just a class, so we'll create a class and your class name should match your file name. So this is author and your uh, model should extend the eloquent class which is going to give your model a whole bunch of functionality for interacting with your database. And that's really all you have to do. Just by defining your model and extending the eloquent class, you're going to gain some static methods that we can use to retrieve information from our database. Now if you didn't follow the naming conventions, so if you don't have a plural table and a singular model, you can still attach your model to your table by setting a public static property here called table and just set that equal to your table name. Uh, in this case, our table name is called authors, so I'm going to set mine to authors. And I'll just leave this here for reference in case you didn't follow the naming conventions. So that's it for the model. We'll save this and close it out, and we can begin working with it. Let's switch back into our authors controller. And now we just want to use our author model to grab all of our authors and bind it to the view so that we can display the authors in the browser. So I'm going to break this with, uh, with method call down onto a new line because we're going to do a couple with calls here. And we'll do another one. We'll bind a variable to the view called authors and it's going to hold all of our authors from the database. So we can use our author model just by calling its class name author and then it has a static method that Eloquent gives to it called all and this is going to return an array of author objects to us and we'll have access to them in the view using this authors variable and we'll be able to loop through that and display all of our authors. So let's save our controller and we'll go into our index view file and let's use a for each loop and we'll loop over that authors array as author and then we'll just end the for each loop here. Uh, let's actually stick these authors into an unordered list so I'm gonna wrap unordered list tags around the for each loop and now inside the for each loop we have access to this author object and we can print out information about our author so I'm gonna create list item tags here and open up our blade brackets and we'll use the author object and we can print out the author's biography or the author's ID uh, I'm just going to print out the author's name. There we go. So we looped through all of our authors and we're just printing out the author's name here into an unordered list. So if we go to our browser and we refresh, there we go. We get a list of all of the authors from our database. Now you'll notice that they are just printing out in the order that they were inserted into the database. So we can change that ordering. I would like the authors to be printed in alphabetical order. So I'm going to go back into my text editor and go to the authors controller. And instead of using the all method, I'm going to use the order underscore by method, which will allow me to order my results by a field. So I'm going to order them by the name field. You can pass in a second parameter if you want them to be ordered in descending order, but by default, it'll just order them in ascending order. And so we now just need to tell this query to be executed. Uh, to do that we use the get method and that's going to execute our order by query and return an array of author objects to us again. So we need to make sure we close our with parenthesis there. So we'll save our controller and if we go into the browser again and refresh you can see now that our authors are being ordered in alphabetical order. Now that we have our authors displaying here, let's turn each one of the authors into a link so we can click on that author and that'll take us to another page to view more information about that specific author. So now that we're going to be creating links, I think it's a good time to introduce named routes. So the benefit of creating a named route is that as we create links, we can create links in one of two ways. We can create a link to a URI which matches one of the routes in our routes.php file. And if in the future we would ever change that URI for a route, that would mean we'd have to go back through our entire application and update all of those links to make sure that the URI goes to the correct location. 
So the benefit of using a named route is that you can create links to the name of the route instead of the URI. And then if you would ever change your URI of your route, that name is always going to point to the correct location. So I hope I didn't confuse you there. It'll probably make more sense as we uh, name our routes and I'll show you how to create links. So let's switch into our text editor and we're going to open up our routes.php file and if we scroll down here you can see here's our authors route which maps to our authors index action. So let's give it a name in the array that you pass as the second parameter to your get method you can set an as key and then the value is the name that you want to give to the route. So I'm going to name this route authors and so now anytime we want to refer to this route, like if we wanted to create a link to it, or if we wanted to redirect to it, we can do so by referring to its name. And no matter what we change the URI of the route, the name is always going to point to the correct location. Now let's just create our new route to handle the request for displaying a page to view an individual author. So I'll create a new route using the route class and its get method and the URI is going to look something like, let's go to the browser and take a look. So if we wanted to view the first author, we would go to author slash one, where one is the ID of the author that we want to view. If we wanted to view the sixth author, we would go to author slash six, and that would uh, retrieve the author with an ID of six. So this is what our URI needs to look like for our route. So we'll go back into our text editor, and let's enter that in so it's going to be author slash and then the ID. We can't just hard code in the ID though because otherwise every time we'd visit this URI we would get the same author. Uh, Laravel gives us a URI wildcard so you just open up parentheses colon and then the word any and then close the parentheses and this will allow any ID to be passed into the route. So that's our URI. We now need to just give our route a name so we'll set the as key and I'm going to name this route as author and then we need to map our route to a controller in action so we'll set the uses key and this is going to be mapped to our authors controller and a view action so that's it for our routes let's go and create this view action in our controller so we'll go to our authors controller and let's create a new action here, a public function, and we prefix it with the get HTTP verb, and our action is called view, and now we need to pass in a parameter here to our action, and I'm going to call mine ID, and what this allows us to do is retrieve the ID that's passed in through the URL. So whatever ID they pass in here, say the number 6, inside of our action, we'll have access to that number 6 using this ID variable. So there's our view action, and we just need to return a view. So we'll return, and we'll use the view class and its make method, and we'll tell it to render a view view file. And then we're going to need to bind some data to the view. So we'll want to give the view a title. So let's do the title here, and we'll say author view page. And then we'll also want to send the author that we're trying to view to the view as well. So I'm going to bind a variable called author, and this is going to hold our author. So now we just need to use our author model to retrieve the author. So we'll call author, and we have a static find method, which takes in the ID of the author that we want to view. So remember, we have access to the ID here, so we'll just pass in the ID and that will return an author object for us and we'll have access to it inside the view using this author variable. So that's it for our action. We now need to create this view file. So under views, authors, create a new file and we're going to save it as view.blade.php. We just need to tell our view to use our layout file. So that's layouts.default. And then we'll create our content section. And then end the content section. And so we're just going to create an h1 tag. Oops, h1. 
and we'll display the author's name. So we'll open up our blade brackets and we'll use the author object and display that author's name. And then we'll create a p tag here to display the author's biography. So use the author object and display the biography. There we go. How about we also display when the author was last updated? So I'll use a p tag and a small tag here to make it a little smaller. And then in here we'll open up our blade brackets again, use the author object, and we'll use or display the updated at date time. So we know when the author was last updated. So this will give us some more information about the author. So we should be able to uh, go to this view page in our browser. So if we went to author slash six, you'll see we get Bilbo. If we go to author slash one, we get Andrew, and so on, author slash two. And it displays information about that specific author. Now it's a pain to have to just type in the URL. So let's make sure that we turn each of our authors here into a link so that it'll link to its page. So let's go back into our text editor and we'll go to our index view and here's where we're displaying the author's name. So we'll just want to turn this into a link. Laravel gives us a HTML class to build links with. That's in all caps and we have a static method called link to route and this will create a link to a named route. Now the first parameter that you pass into it is the name of the route. So we're wanting to link to our author route which displays an individual author. So we will use the name author and then a comma and the second parameter is what you want the linked text to be for the link. In this case we just want it to be the author's name. Now remember our author route does require the ID of the author that we want to view. So to pass that in we need to use a third parameter here. It's just an array and just include the author ID and that will build the correct link for you linking to this author. So let's save this and go to our browser. And if we refresh our author's index page, you can see now that we have each one as a link. And if you click on it, it'll take you right to that author's view page. There's Bill Bo, and there's Kenny, and so on. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful on retrieving your data and working with named routes and creating links. And thank you for watching.